गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई एम बाबेश्री बी एन वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग महाराजा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी माइसोर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्लेटफॉर्म आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू मॉड्यूल नंबर फोर दैट इज फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी मैट्रिक्स मेथड फ्रॉम द सब्जेक्ट एनालिसिस ऑफ इनडिटर्मिनेट स्ट्रक्चर्स हैविंग द कोड एटीन सी वी फिफ्टी टू सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन let us discuss about the basic concepts which we are going to use while analyzing the continuous beams frames and trusses by using flexibility matrix method you all know in preceding chapters like slope deflection moment distribution or conness method we have dealt with classical method of structural analysis they are termed as classical method because they have been in use before the advent of computers the so called matrix method like flexibility matrix method also uses the fundamental principles that we have used in classical methods while analyzing the structure because of the rapid development of computers and growing demand for the better method of analysis of complex and lightweight structures leads to the development of matrix method of structural analysis the two important principles of matrix method of structural analysis are flexibility matrix approach and stiffness matrix approach here in this particular module we are going to discuss in detail about flexibility matrix approach this particular matrix method is also called as force method because here we are going to use unit force to find the unknown displacements to understand about this flexibility matrix let us consider a system with single degree of freedom here we can consider a spring with mass p here the d can be expressed in terms of applied force p the d is nothing but displacement and p is the applied force here and we can use the basic relation here that is delta l equals to pl divided by ae so delta l is nothing but the displacement and if you take out this components that is l by ae it is length and a is area of cross section and e is angst modulus this can be equated to the term called f here delta l equals to pl by a a e in the place of delta we can write d and in the place of l by a e we can use the coefficient called f and this gives rise to the basic equation of flexibility matrix that is d equals to f into p where d is the displacement and p is the applied force and f is the flexibility matrix coefficient which is equated to l by a e so from this particular expression if you define the flexibility matrix it is d by p that is nothing but it is the displacement obtained per unit force applied so if the structure consists of multiple degrees of freedom and subjected to several loads then this displacement can be expressed in terms of force in the form of matrix equation that is by using this basic equation we can write the matrix format like matrix d equals to matrix f into matrix p clear so where matrix d represents displacement matrix f represents flexibility and matrix p represent the applied force now after understanding this basic equation in flexibility matrix method the next important point is general coordinate directions in matrix method of structural analysis we make use of this coordinate directions and these coordinate directions are different from polar r co cartesian coordinates for example if you consider any beam or frame 
let me consider this portal frame call these points as a b and c d clear so here if you find out the degree of static indeterminacy for this particular structure so it works out to be 3 so this indicates in this particular structure the number of unknowns are 3 so after getting the degree of static indeterminacy i should convert this indeterminate structure to a released determinate structure that means i should find out these three unknown redundant forces so for that i'm just going to take off this fixed support d this is a rigid frame and now you can see if i take out this support so you can see the cantilever bent that means here at point D, I have one horizontal force, one vertical reaction that is VD and one moment called MD. This becomes the released structure. So along these forces, that is unknown forces, HD, VD and MD, I should mark the coordinate directions. So this is point A, B, D, C and at D, so I can mark this coordinate directions. I can call this as 1 and this as coordinate number 2 and the moment as coordinate number 3. So this gives me the coordinate directions. And regarding the sign convention, so you have taken VD in upward direction, HD to the right side and moment in the clockwise. So these directions are considered as positive. That means while marking the coordinate directions, I should mark in the positive manner. So what do you mean by this general coordinate directions then? The direction of forces or displacements which are to be found in a structural system are termed as general coordinate directions. See, if I want to find the unknown forces at A, then I should mark the directions at point A. If I want to find at B or at C, I should mark the respective coordinate directions at these particular points. So from this coordinate directions, I can write the displacement vector that is displacement matrix. Since we have three coordinates, I get D1, D2 and D3. To be specific, in coordinate number 1, see I have applied vertical force. Because of the application of vertical force, here I get delta dv. So at 2, I have horizontal force. Because of the horizontal force, I get the displacement in horizontal direction at that particular point that is termed as delta dh. And because of the moment, I get rotation that is theta d. This is the displacement vector. Clear? The forces in vertical and horizontal direction gives me the deflection or displacement called delta and because of the moment, I'll get theta. In the same manner, if you write the force vector that is P, again, since I have three coordinates, I get P1, P2 and P3. To be specific, at 1, I have VD, at 2, HD and at 3, I have MD. So like this, we can mark the coordinate directions to get the force and displacement vectors. So now you can consider one more portal frame with the coordinate directions marked like this. So here, instead of assuming the redundance at joint A or at D, I have assumed the redundance. See, DSI is same. This is also portal frame with fixed ends. This is also portal frame with fixed ends. Therefore, the DSI is same for both the frames. 
So I am going to assume 3 redundants at joint B, I get one rotation, at joint C also I will get rotation. At this position, I am going to get one axial force, because of that axial force only I will get this delta. You can call this force as sway force. If you write the force vector and displacement vector for this particular structure, you are going to get the force vector as C at coordinate number 1. I have applied moment, therefore it is termed as MB, at 2 it is MC and at 3 I have sway force. So you can write this is P1, P2 and P3. If you write the displacement vector, so because of this moment I get the rotation theta b and here also we have applied moment therefore it is theta c and because of this sway force I am going to get delta. So this is in general can be denoted as d1, d2 and d3 clear. So like this based on the redundant forces assume we can mark the coordinate directions and based on that coordinate directions we can write the force and displacement vectors. In matrix method of analysis, the force means in general the forces as well as the moments. See here these are all called forces and you can see the moment also. Similarly displacement means deflections as well as rotations. That means if you see the d vector, so I can see the combinations of delta that is deflection and theta rotations. So this is all about general coordinate directions. Now let me consider a force system along with the coordinate directions to formulate flexibility matrix equation. So let us consider this particular diagram. So we can apply the loads at different positions, so P1, P2. P i is P j P n. So it is going to deflect like this. You can mark the displacement values also. Here I am going to get d1, d2, d i, d j and this is d n. You can call this b as a, b. This is the force system we have considered. And you can mark the coordinate directions also. We have coordinate 1, 2, this is i, this is j, this is n. So this is called as coordinate direction. So now by referring these two diagrams and by using the basic flexibility matrix relationship, I can establish the set of linear equations. We know that flexibility matrix equation is given by D equals to F into P. For the first coordinate that is D1, the equation is given by F11 p1 plus f12 p2 plus and it is continue till the position i that is f1 i p i then f1 j p j then we have till f1 n and p n if you write for the second position that is at coordinate number 2, we get the displacement D2, we have F21 P1, then F22 P2 plus F2I PI 
प्लस एफ टू जे पी जे प्लस एफ टू एन पी एन एंड इट इज कंटिन्यू टिल डी आई सो दिस इज एफ आई वन पी वन प्लस एफ आई टू पी टू प्लस एफ आई आई पी आई प्लस एफ आई जे पी जे प्लस एफ आई एन पी एन एंड इफ यू डू एंड इफ यू राइट द सेम फॉर द जे कॉर्डिनेट इट इज एफ जे वन पी वन प्लस एफ जे टू पी टू प्लस एफ जे आई पी आई प्लस एफ जे जे पी जे प्लस एफ जे एन पी एन एंड द लास्ट वन इट इज डी एन इट इज एफ एन वन पी वन प्लस एफ एन टू पी टू प्लस एफ एन आई पी आई प्लस एफ एन जे पी जे प्लस एफ एन एन पी एन लाइक दिस वी कैन एस्टैब्लिश a set of linear equations using the basic flexibility matrix condition so here in this particular set of equation the term fij is called as flexibility coefficient which gives the displacement at ith coordinate that means if you apply the unit force at coordinate j we can get the respective displacement at coordinate i and we can express this particular equation in the form of matrix also so let us formulate the matrix for this particular set of equations see i have displacement matrix d1 to n that equals to i have this f matrix f11 f21 then f i1 then f j1 then f n1 like this in second column i have f12 f22 f i2 f j2 then f n2 and this continued till f 1i f 2i f i i f j i then f n i and in fourth column i have f 1j f 2j f i j then f j j then f n j last is continued till nth element that is f 1n f 2n f 3n sorry f in it is f in f jn and f n n till i need to write the vector p so if you observe this particular matrix see we can develop the elements in f matrix column wise see this is i and this is j so if you look at the jth position we are going to apply the unit force along coordinate number 1 and we check the displacement at the remaining coordinates that is from 1 to nth position and in the same manner if you look at the second column here we are going to apply the unit load that is unit force at coordinate number 2 to get the respective displacement at other coordinates so if you continue this here i have the force vector like p1 p2 pi pj and it is continued till p n if you write the size of this matrix this is column matrix of order 1 cross n cross 1 and this is also column matrix of order n cross 1 and it is square matrix of order n cross n so please note this 
in any problem D and P matrices are column matrices. That means we get multiple rows but one single column and F matrix is always a square matrix. So this you can also write in the form matrix D of order n cross 1, matrix F of order n cross n and matrix P of order n cross 1. Based on the number of static indeterminacy whatever we get we can decide the size of this matrix. If I get 2 then this will be 2 cross 2 and this is 2 cross 1. That means whatever the number we are going to get as degree of static indeterminacy this is directly equals to n here. Clear? And here you can see this F11, F22, FII, FJJ and FNN. These elements are called as leading diagonal elements and these elements are always positive and the elements which are present after diagonal they are symmetric you can get negative answers here like you can get negative answer in the place of fi1 fi2 like that but these elements are symmetrical so like this for the given force system you can establish the flexibility matrix equation now let us discuss the procedure that we are going to follow while solving the problems by using flexibility matrix approach. The very first step here is to find the degree of static indeterminacy. For that you can use the basic equation Km plus R minus Nj. Clear? And based on the structure you are going to consider that is beams, frames or truss the values of this k and n changes that we are going to discuss while solving the problems and based on the number whatever you are going to get in this particular step say example if I get 2 then the second point is to assume the redundance based on this number if I get 2 I should assume 2 number of redundant. So, in step number 3, we should mark the coordinate directions along the directions of redundant. Clear? Then, in step number 4, we are going to find the displacement matrix DL. Clear? In specific, it is called as DL that is externally applied load. We should consider the externally applied loads here and we get one more D that is the known displacement values because of sinking or rotation of joints or it may be equals to zero also that depends upon the nature of problem that means in general we have D minus DL that is matrix D minus DL equals to F into P. So we get two sets of displacement values here. One is because of the externally applied load and another one is because of the known displacement. After finding the displacement vector, next we should find the coefficients in the flexibility matrix. That means if I get the order that is F matrix of order 2 cross 2 then we get four elements like F11, F21, then F12 and F22. Here I have two columns, column 1 and column 2. In column 1, I am going to apply the unit load at coordinate number 1 to get the displacement at coordinate number 1 and 2. In the same manner, in column number 2, I am going to apply the unit load at coordinate number 2 to get the displacement at coordinates 1 and 2. Like this, I can get the flexibility matrix elements column wise. So, after getting this F, using this basic equation, I can find the unknown forces. So, here the P can be find 
by using F inverse into matrix D minus matrix D L. So if we know the basics of matrix, we can easily find the F inverse manually. So after getting this P that is the redundant forces, we can compute the remaining structural quantities needed in particular structure. That means initially if I have assumed the redundance in the form of reactions, then I should find the moments that is end moments by using statics of equilibrium. Then I can sketch SFT, PMD and elastic curve for the given structure. So these are the basics you should remember in this particular module that is flexibility matrix method. In this particular module, you get three categories that is continuous beams, frames and trusses. In beams, yes, we have beams with no sinking of support and beams with sinking of supports and in frames also we have sway frames and no sway frames. Let us discuss about this particular procedure in detail while solving the problems. In next session, let us meet to solve the problems on continuous beams. Thank you.